Hello, hello, Mario here. First of all, I want to thank my patrons for making my work possible. It is important to get this work going because the mainstream ideological institutions won't do this work. We have adopted a new policy when it comes to publishing videos. The full videos are for patrons only, but after a certain period, we will publish these videos for all. And that is because we think it is important this knowledge is available to all. However, I personally ask you to support our work as it is needed to continue. Welcome to Ken de Bainanes, located in Brittany in France. Why did we pick this ancient tumulus-like structure of all structures? Because this structure has something we haven't seen anywhere else on Earth. Cairn de Bananes is a very ancient measuring device that has been adapted to the migrating geographic pole and so to the deforming crust and thus the changing latitude of this specific region. Let us be clear about one thing. No archaeologist with all their fancy stories has any idea what these tunnels of Cairn de Baranes that are pointing in different directions were used for. Some think it were burial chambers, like almost all ancient structures are typified. Others think the structure was used to measure the seasons. However, there is only one tunnel that comes close to the current winter solstice of this location. That is the most southerly tunnel, the tunnel we have called Tunnel A. The direction of this tunnel is almost to the current solstice angle of this current latitude of Ken de Bananes. The rest of the tunnels are pointing to nowhere, and that is why no one has any clue whatsoever. Once you have wrapped your head around the idea that the geographic pole has shifted and so that the latitudes have changed over the last hundreds of thousands of years, you might get a sense of what all these ancient structures are about. Once a location shifts in latitude, something that is believed to be impossible by geologists, the solstice angles change as well. Because Ken de Bananes is not a square or rectangular structure, it is not recorded in our database of over 1000 structures. But because it is ancient, it might be part of our very ancient history as well, and so it might have been around during the deformation cycles of the crust. And because ancient humans were as eager as we to know time and date, they might have been very busy recording this. In this case, this process might have been recorded in the stone structures of Ken de Bananes. So what did we do? We have applied our method to Ken de Bananes and discovered incredible things about this ancient structure. Archaeologists believe that Cairn de Barnes is built between 5000 and 4000 years BC and built in two stages. However, what they do not explain is the curious orientational pattern of the tunnels. We have discovered how Cairn de Barnes was used and how old this structure is. It follows up on a long row of many more successful discoveries that we have done before. Cairn de Bananes follows the migration of the geographic pole. We can even pinpoint which tunnel belongs to which era. Today's solstice angles at the location of Cairn de Bananes are 37.1 degrees on both sides of the equinoxes. So it is clear this makes no sense in today's situation. 
But if you know how the pole has migrated, you will understand what happened in the ancient past and what this ancient monument is about. And also why it is so unique in the world, one of its kind in the world, as far as we know. When we look at tunnel A, we see it is almost oriented to the current winter solstice of this latitude in Brittany today. Only the latitude that belongs to the direction of the tunnel A is such that it correlates to the location of the geographic pole to be at around 83.5 degrees north and 47 degrees west. The winter solstice of this position of the pole exactly matches with this direction of the tunnel. And so we were able to find the age of this part of the tunnel. This tunnel was built during the migration of the pole. The big difference with today is that the sea levels were about 100 meters lower. So one could walk all the way to England and back. There was no North Sea as we know it today. That's important to imagine. To help you a bit, we made this image. To understand the principles that were used, we had to back-engineer the whole situation. The angles of all the other tunnels, which are the tunnels B to K, appear to follow the angles of the winter solstices along the path of the migrating pole. The spherical mathematics that we used can be a little intimidating if you are not used to it. It looks like this. There is one small variable we could not isolate, that of the tilt of the spin axis. So we had to take the average angle, which is 23.3 degrees, which is almost the same angle as that of today. The tilt angle varies a bit between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees. So this variation of the tilt is relatively small Hence, taking the average is a safe choice and results in a small margin of error. The path of the pole relative to the location of Cairn de Bananes has a much bigger influence on the latitude and so on the solstice angles. Something that is also interesting to see is that the moving location of the pole between position 4 and 5 has hardly any influence on the changes of the solstice angles. And that is caused by the almost perpendicular constellation at these locations of the moving pole in regard to the location of Cairn de Bananes. Within this configuration, the latitudes hardly changed anymore, so it was not so easy to measure changes in the polar movements. Here you see an animation where the pole approximately was in relation to every tunnel. What is the probability that we are correct in our claims? The probability that the direction of the tunnels follows the path of the pole via one of the solstices, as seen from the location of Brittany, is very, very small. The probability that this constellation of Cairn de Bananes fits the path of the winter solstice of the pole, as seen from this location, is less than 0.1% to be coincidental. Another question that we could ask is this. Why is the structure not buried underneath a thick, dense layer of soil, if it is so old? The answer is simple, because the structure always has been visited over the many millennia. The build-up of soil goes so slowly that it is easily walked away by visitors. We see the same 
with Stonehenge and Karnak, Karnak with a C, Karnak in France. They are insanely ancient but still clearly visible because throughout the many millennia people have been visiting these places. If the area of Ken, the Baroness, would be scant with lidar, countless buried structures would be discovered, structures that were never visited after they were built. The whole Earth's surface would be scant with lidar, the amount of newly discovered structures would be in the millions, maybe even billions. Forgotten structures, covered by soil, that are lost in oceans of time. No one remembers them. And they are buried because humans did not visit these places enough to prevent them from being covered. If you have any questions about our, our discoveries, please ask them. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Bye bye!